So welcome to Retro Bassin. Stick around as we crack open this old school gem. You're gonna go nuts when you see what's inside. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. What I have here today is about 25 pounds of old school gold. So if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from the golden era of bass fishing. Stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know when we post a new video like this one. This has been a pretty odd year, to say the least. And I was pretty bummed not to get back to Maryland over Thanksgiving for that most special of holiday traditions, the family Pissmaster Classic. Um, luckily, the family was still able to execute and they broke the all-time pickle record. So I guess I should have filmed this year, not last. But while we were hanging out here on the retro compound during Thanksgiving, I got a knock at the door from my neighbor, Dave. And Dave's dad, Ray, was in town. He is an old school kind of guy and he has seen an episode or two of Retro Bassin. So Ray brought some of his old school bass fishing gear, including this awesome tackle box. So thanks again, Ray, for use of your tackle box. I've been through this. You guys are gonna go nuts when you see what's in here. If you guys know this channel, you know how I tend to geek out just a little bit over old school stuff. When Ray walked up with this monster of a tackle box, and honestly, I think this thing rivals my Umco, to be honest with you. It was like Christmas morning. When I got into here though, oh my goodness. Um, you're just gonna have to see. So as far as model number, it looks like this is the Flambeau Adventure model, uh, 2275 with spinnerbait box, and there are some spinnerbaits in there. Okay, so I think it's time to crack this bad boy open. Uh, you ready? Oh. <laughs> so first things first, I love the rows and rows. Um, and I love that old school orange and brown combo. Obviously, right? I've got the 2018 Tracker Heritage. That is a color palette that I, I'm quite familiar with. Where do you guys want to start? Okay, so in right out of the gates, honestly, there's some like eBay gold in here. Uh, so the first thing that I see is a sweet hidden dying flutter um this is actually one of the cooler baits from hedden that uh you don't see a ton of play looks quite similar to a devil's horse um and i've got the one that is got the one without the propellers uh i think that's like a dying flutter what's this one called okay yeah this is a dying flutter as well um so this is the dying flutter with the, the spinners on it but a nice classic old school bass pattern like right out of the gates money Okay, so what is this? We've got a Bill Norman Lures uh, line backer. Ooh, it looks like a little Rebel Minnow. Uh, like how crazy, he's still got old stuff in the package. Um, it, he, Ray, you may not get this box back, buddy, just to let you know, holy smokes. That's pretty cool. Um, ooh, there we go. There's a nice little bait from Bagley. Um, I don't know if that's a killer bee or not. I'm sure y'all know better than I do, but that is 100% a really nice fire tiger pattern Bagley. Oh, ooh, okay, here we go. Uh, another old school Bill Norman crankbait. Um, I haven't seen that model. Look at it. It's got like a painted lip on it. That's kind of unique. And I swear the old school plastic they used to use on his, it's got a different sounding rattle. That's like a nice low thump. Um, what else do we have? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay. 
So a little old school Rapala minnow action and you can tell it's actually got the bottom, the white belly where you can still see the sort of rough work to get the, the hardware in there and fill it in with like almost like a plaster. Um, but that is a nice, nice minnow. And what's that, eight inch right there? Uh, pretty sweet. We've got some old school spinners that have probably seen better days. It looks like a purple bucktail of some sort with a double spinner. There's a logo on here. What does it say? Uh, Cordell. Oh, wow. So that's an old school cotton Cordell spinner of some sort. That's pretty cool. Oh, okay. So we've got a couple more head and dine flutters. There's a nice one in sort of a, a green scale pattern. Ooh, he's in great shape. And look at that guy, another dine flutter. <laughs> that one, he looks like he's been warped with time a little bit, so. <laughs> And I did see another Cotton Cordell Laura in here as well. Yep, look at that. So that is a Cotton Cordell version of a uh, Tom Mann's Little George. And that is pretty sweet. I don't know if it's called the Super Shad, I think. Um, but this is a heavy little nice schooling bass bait with a pretty sweet tail sprinter on it. And, oh, we've got some more uh, Bill Norman baits, by the way. So, nice old school green, uh, silver, actually, no, that's gold. And you tell me that's not a color selector uh, bait right there. That looks like right off the palette of the old Lauren Hill color selector. Sweet. One drawer down, <laughs> four to go. You see what I'm saying? Awesome. Ooh, okay. So right out of the gates, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Whopper Stopper Hellbenders. Uh, this is definitely a bait that we still throw on the old retro wagon today. Um, I'll see if I can get any of these guys out. Oh, man. Ooh, that's a nice looking uh, Whopper Stopper right there. I love that heart-shaped metal lip, that body. And that single little spinner on the back. Um, honestly, this is a, one of my go-to crankbaits. I still fish this thing a ton. So there's a nice whopper stopper. Oh, there's two more in sort of a white um, pattern. Almost like white herringbone. Um, there's a whopper stopper in, looks like a pinfish pattern. Ooh, now that. That is not a new school looking bait, is it? Look at that thing. <sighs> okay, so I see two more here. There's a white coach dog. Looks like a little smaller bait. And chrome, and I don't know if you all can see, but there's a real subtle um, sort of yellow perch scale pattern on that one. Oh, that's money. Um, continuing over, we've got some Rebel lures in the package. Looks like a classic uh, Rebel minnow, jointed minnow. Oh, wow. That thing is rare. Back in the day, I felt like there were two colors of Rebel. You had like the gold minnow and the silver. Check that thing out. It's like a fire tiger, like a flat fire tiger color. That's really unique. And that looks like it's probably never <laughs> been opened. Oh, man. Ooh, there's a little Bagley bait. Um, I forget the name of this, but that is a sort of a Bagley shad pattern right there. Uh, that's a pretty small, nice little bait too. What else we got? Um, that looks like another Cordell, um, sort of a crankbait um, rattle trap spinner deal. That's interesting. I know what that's called. Um, okay, so there's an old Bagley minnow. And a Rebel Minnow. So, some nice Minnow baits in here. Oh, uh, okay. So there is, this looks like a Bill Norman crankbait. I'm pretty sure it looks like a little N. Sort of the, uh, their version of the Big O. That looks like that, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't see any branding on it. But you can just kind of see those Norman eyes. I feel like those are always super close together. 
And last, oh, okay, so this is definitely a pretty rare crankbait. So this is a crankbait that came from Blakemore back in the day. It's called the Trouble Shooter. Uh, I've got some of these. I just need to get uh, get them wet. What it is, it's sort of a big O style crankbait, but check it out. There are a couple of interesting channels. There's a channel right in the lip and water comes through there and it exits out the top and the bottom of the bait. It's supposed to create a bunch of disturbance as this thing's going through the water, but basically water comes out here, exits the top, exits the bottom. Um, I don't know, maybe gimmicky, maybe not, but I've got a few of these. I probably, this might be good inspiration for me to get them out. Oh. There's so many baits, I can't get it closed. Okay, uh, down to number three. Whoo, this is like top water heaven here. Um, <laughs> you, guys are get, you guys are gonna go nuts. Uh, so check this out. Here's a nice bait from uh, Smithwick. As I can tell, it's sort of got those devil horse eyes. I'm pretty sure this is called the Care Top. It's a wooden bait, uh, sort of just a popper style. That's money. Um, uh, that looks like a Cotton Cordell Crazy Shad. Sort of their version of the Torpedo. Ooh, an old Pico Popper. Look at that. Yeah, that's an old school Texas bait. Um, we've got a Redfin, Cordell Redfin. Ooh, an old school heading Lucky 13 in a pretty rare color. I've never even seen that before. That is like a silver and yellow and... Ooh! And here is another one. What is this? The Hedden. Okay, it's a little bit warped. I think I, this thing's seen some seen some heat over the years. That is a Hedden Chugger Spook. Oh, check that out. Okay, so here is a crawfish pattern bait. I'm pretty sure that's a Bagley of some sort. Looks like it. And I see some interesting baits here. So this looks like a, what is this? Swimming? Okay, so this looks like a Bayou Boogie, but it's labeled Swimming Shad. Um, I've never actually heard of this one. I know that I've seen the uh, sort of the Pico Purse, the Bayou Boogie, and the Swimming Minnow, but I've never seen the Swimming Shad. Definitely, it's that classic profile, but check out the line tie. It's got like uh, three different areas to tie or put a swivel. That's really unique. Um, drop a comment below if you've even heard of this bait before, but the Swimming Shad. Um, oh, that looks pretty sweet. And uh, some sort of unbranded uh, rattle trap. Uh, Cotton Cordell, an old school, really cool little rattle spot. Ooh, <laughs> I think Ray might have been into the color selector back in the day. Check this thing out. So that is a Cotton Cordell Boy Howdy in what is 100% um, the flow red pattern of a color selector. Ooh, I don't know if he got that out of a kit or what, but that thing is, oh, that's money. Ah, oh, another Hedden Dine Flutter. Um, maybe that's a bait I should be fished with a little bit more, huh? Okay, so there's the original Devil's Horse. Yet another, okay, so this is not a Dine Flutter, it looks like it, so it's actually the Pico Lures Slasher. So real similar to the Dine Flutter, but just made by Pico. And the Cordell um, Crazy Shad. You can see it says uh, Crazy Shad right there. Uh, another Cordell rattle spot right there. And look at this. So this is from a uh, bomber, I'm pretty sure, called the Pinfish. Sort of their version of the rattle spot. 
I think it had a little more of a saltwater flair to it, to be honest with you. Um, does it rattle? No, it's silent. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Three down, two to go. I mean, is this not like the most insane box you've ever seen? I mean, ah, oh, just so cool. Old school. Uh, Fred Arbogast, Hula Popper. That's a nice one. Okay, look at this. So this is a crankbait from Cotton Cordell called the Huncho. It's a weird bait. It's got like a molded lip. And it's all kind of the same color. It almost looks like a humpback. Um, I've actually got a few of these. I've started to fish with them. I haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, but I think this old school bait's definitely got some potential. I've got some of these punchos. Okay, another bomber. Pinfish. I hope that's what it is. And here is one from Pico as well. This is called the Side Shad. It's a topwater propeller bait, but what's interesting is, check out, it actually goes this way in the water, so that it's, if you're looking up, this thing is actually swimming on its side. Cool little note about Pico lures, by the way, when it's the Pico Pop, the Side Shad, and the Pico Perch, is the Pico lures are now back in production, and you can go to the website and honestly get all of these old school baits today. Um, they're doing an awesome job with the color patterns, and I've definitely bought a few. Huh. Okay, so this is a crankbait that I am 80% mm, sure is a strike king of some sort. Um, what was the name of this crankbait line? I don't know. Um, bell me out, Gizmo, if you know, because I, I don't recall. But I'm pretty sure that's a strike king uh, crankbait of some sort. That's I love the eyes on that, though. Ugh. Um, little head and sonar. Little head and tiny, or even a teeny torpedo. I don't know which one that is. Okay, so I can tell by the squared off lips. So this is a Pico Perch. Um, originally built in Texas. And that is a wild color. Um, doesn't rattle. Uh, this, this bait, I need to fish with it more. I did a quick episode on these guys. It runs a lot higher than you think it would when you think of sort of the Bayou Boogie style bait. It's got a pretty cool action, but over grass flats this spring, um, I'm going to be throwing that thing a little bit more often. And, whoo, hot damn, two more. Okay, so there it is, a uh, Pico Perch in a really nice pattern. You can see it says Pico Perch on the bottom. And, ooh, look at that sort of green and cream color. And that one also says Pico Perch. <sighs> it's like never ending. Oh, man. Um, okay, so this is interesting. So this is a bait from Cotton Cordell called the Near Nothing. It's a topwater bait, but you notice it's solid, so it actually sinks. Uh, this is a money bait for schooling bass. And here looks like another head and a uh, chugger spook in really a, almost a popar size to it. Woo! I've never seen that. Uh, classic old school jointed jitterbug. Bill Dance caught his first bass ever on the jitterbug. So this looks like a nice uh, little bomber crankbait in a smallmouth bass pattern. Okay, so here is one called uh, the Water Gator. So I think this is from Smithwick as well. You can sort of tell by the classic eyes. And it's sort of a weird bait. It's rattle trap style lipless crankbait. It's got sort of a flat, interesting lip on it. it a weird tail and a spinner. Um, I wonder how this thing would fish. There's a lot going on there with that bait. Um, 
interesting little mini Bill Norman crankbait, but it's got that metal heart-shaped lip, so that's interesting. Um, this looks like, I don't know, what used to be a reef runner maybe, or maybe something from Cotton Cordell, not sure. Uh, a couple of rattle spots in old school color. And one more rattle spot. The old rattle spots, by the way, had a lot, it felt really solid. All right, we're down to one. So talking about some cool old school stuff, check this out. The Mr. Jigs, that must be from Mr. Twister, Lunker Buzz. If you had to live off what you caught. Oh, still in the package. <laughs> uh, the Lunker Buzz, why is it so different? Well, the uh, Lunker Buzz employs one or two rotating aluminum spinners, um, which upon retrieve display a unique pinwheel action uh, accompanied by a distinct buzzing sound. Basically, this is the top water lure designed for maximum ref reflection and vibration. Uh, the uh, configuration of the pinwheel keeps the surface level even on slow retrieve. So there is one, two, look at that green and black color. Three, four, Five um, new old, old stock Lunker Buzzes. Sweet. Um, what is this thing? Looks like an old school spinner bait of some sort. Sort of degrading there. I'm not going to ruin that too much. The Snag Proof Big Bass Worm. The Will Weedless Worm. That thing's pretty cool. Ah, the old Uncle Josh bass strip. Uh, check that thing out. So by the way, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Uncle Josh just started selling the number 11 pork frog again. So those are available back on their website. I know that the uh, Uncle Josh pork frogs were around for I think like 90 years before they discontinued it. So really cool to see them re-release that bait. Um, I think it's like available from uh, on Acme right now. I'm not sure who's got Uncle Josh these days. Um, okay, and there is indeed a spinnerbait box. Um, man, some of these spinnerbaits have probably seen ooh better days. But look at that. I'm going to hold this up as gently as I can. So this is an old cotton cordell. Looks like a Vibra Queen. And look at that weird. That is a Vibra Queen, I'm pretty sure. Look at that weird spring. So some of these spinnerbaits have definitely seen uh, some better days. An old spinnerbait to me is just a thing of beauty. Kind of got back into them with the recent episode on the Oki Bug spinnerbait. And honestly, I think I'm gonna start fishing more spinnerbaits. It is like one of my confidence baits. If I'm going out there, um, as you guys see, there's a lot of baits I'm kind of just trying to learn to fish. Spinnerbait's the one of the ones that I feel like I know how to fish. I can go out there with a spinnerbait in the summer, in the winter, and I feel like I can can get it done. Um, there are some really cool baits here that again have gotten uh, a little bit crusty over the years, but that'll happen. Last one I'll show you, look at that. So nice, you don't see that every day by the way, a bucktail spinner bait. Oh, awesome. So there's a ton of perks to this show, um, but having um, uh, a neighbor uh, and a new friend randomly drop off a box packed to the gills with old school lures is definitely one of them. Um, so Dave Ray, thank you all for letting me borrow um, this heirloom. I will get it back to you. In, in the meantime, drop a comment down below let me know what lure you saw in this box that you would most like to see featured on Retro Bassin. Until next time, keep that tackle box latched and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.